What's up, babies? Today's uh, podcast is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. For less than $10 per person, per meal, that's nothing. That's nothing. You pay more going out to eat or or anything else. Uh, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with the pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash congrats. You will love how good it feels and tastes in your mouth to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash congrats. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. This episode is also brought to you, hmm, also or also? I think also. It's also brought to you by Square Cash. If you don't know what Square Cash is by now, you kuda, for real, because right now I'm telling you I've said it so much on this podcast. I If you're not switching to this Cash app, then you are, you mean nothing to me, okay? It's the best way to pay people back. Most payments can be deposited to your bank account in seconds. If you use other apps to pay people, I, I you know, it's just not, I don't, I don't want you to be doing that. Download the free Square Cash app for iOS or Android now. <laughs> Babies, what the fuck? Hey, fresh off, fresh out the plane. I'm fresh off the plane from Nashville. Fresh out the plane from Cashville, dude. I um, I did it. I came fresh off the plane. Extra paper, scoop that up. There's an LL Cool J song where he says, "Fresh out the private jet from Europe." Extra paper, scoop that up. Eh, sakak. To say that extra paper, first of all, is this sakak, and then to say. You scooped it up is a hit sakak. So I always think about that when I say I got off the plane. Fresh off the fr- private jet from uh fresh off the f- private jet from Europe, extra paper, scoop that up. Like he's also asking the question, extra paper? Scoop that up. Like we all had a co- like, hey Alec Kuja, what do you do with your extra paper? Well, I just scoop it up. Fresh off the private jet from Europe. It's sakak. So um but yeah, I went to I was in Nashville and I just got back. Sat down, recording for my babies. That's it, dude. Mommy's loud and clear right now. Daddy's loud and clear right now. So um, that's what I'm doing uh, to. Uh, that's what I'm doing for you guys because I want you to get this. Some of you guys, late night vampires, are going to be uh, listening to this, and I uh, I really really enjoy that you're going to be doing that. And I'm here for you. I could have pu- I could have put it out on Tuesdays. Could have done it. Because that's what I said in the beginning. I would I would give you guys at least by Tuesday. But I've been pretty good about doing it at least late Monday. Um, a lot of people have been coming up to me saying, I'm a baby. Which is fucking hilarious still to me. Grown men walking up and saying, hey man, I'm a baby. Or from across the street, I'm a baby. And it's so funny not know, n- knowing that not everybody knows about the podcast and everyone else looking at that guy and thinking, the fuck is wrong with that lunatic? So, but that just shows the support, the full fucking cult support that you guys are fucking doing it. And you guys, we are organizing and we are getting together. My goal is to get the government to come after me on this bullshit, okay? Because it's like a, a, a cult. Um, so, but yeah, I was in Nashville and... Um, Got off the. Uh, I, I was in in Nashville, and now Nashville is a great city. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm, it's a great city. It really is. It's it's probably one of the best cities in America. Now, with that being said, I'm about to shit all over it. Okay, because it's a comedy podcast. One time, oh wait, I did a show in Nashville. I was making fun in Nashville, and I was I was doing. I did eight shows, by the way. I had five shows. And then I was just going to do a little run, but then it sold out very quickly. So I added two more. It sold out very quickly. So I added one more. All right. I did eight shows. Mm, So one of, so, you know, I'd open up, I always open up talking about the city. Well, usually. And, uh, and somebody was like, 
Yo, you made fun of my city, man. That's not fucking cool. Hey, man, don't go to a comedy show. Real quick, yo, real quick. Don't go to a comedy show. Nashville is great, though, and uh, it's got some... Here's the deal. These cities are, are weird, though. This, Nashville's feeling itself, which is, is super fucking flamboyantly annoying, okay? Super fucking annoying that it's... Feel, I don't like the cities that feel themselves. This is Nashville. This is Austin. This is Denver. This is uh, San Francisco. Now, you probably say, what about Los Angeles and New York? Yeah, but those cities are too big that it swallows everything else, Okay. I, also, cities where everyone always talk about how great they are, it eh, eh, makes me real mad. And in New York, they do that, but New York is just so fucking big. It's a conglomeration not called Death Row. Um, and New York is just like, hey, you New York, this is the best fucking city in the world. And they've, you know, and, and, and you're just like, yeah, okay. I've been to a lot of places, but Nashville... You'd be there and people would be like, isn't Nashville great? And you're just like, ah, let me just fucking chill out and eat my fucking Subway sandwich. All right, but <laughs> you got to admit, Nashville, ain't that great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so anyway, uh, I, 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 since, so I, uh, they have this, I didn't go, I actually did, didn't go. I walked through it, the Broadway area where they've got fucking, just bars, every bar there on both sides of the street has fucking live music in, in in it. Cool it. You don't have had to. Yeah, guess what? Don't have all the live music in the same fucking place. Know why? Because then it all sounds like noise. Okay, have a fucking bar with live music on it far away from another bar with live music in it. This way, if you're standing outside of both the bars, you don't hear two honky tonk boys fucking screaming out lyrics. Okay. Country music, um, you know, make it about other things. Don't just make it about... Dude, they should make a country song about love, dude. They should make a country song about love. And a girl... A guy should sing about a girl. A guy should sing about a girl that 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 he loves. Or a girl that he missed an opportunity with. That's what uh, somebody should make a country song about. Or you know what? A girl should make a country song about a guy that did him wrong. Dude, where's that country song? Where's the country song about the girl that where the guy did him wrong and she's about to do a two-step on his face? Where's the country song about the girl falling in love, huh? Hey, country songs. Hey, country songs. Make more songs about love. So many songs about love, dude. Oh, I love her. I'm a honky-tonk lover. It's a honky-tonk. Shonky tonk. <laughs> uh, dude, it's fucking shonky tonk, man. It's a shonky tonk. Honky tonk, loving. Brown, brick, brown. You walk down Broadway, and that's one thing. And then you walk two steps, and there's fucking. Oh, I fucking. He did me wrong. He did me wrong. I took a bat to his TV. A brown, brick, brown. And then you got walk two more feet, and then it's honk a tongue loving. And you're like, isn't this the fucking first song? Yeah, but all the songs are about honk a tongue loving. Or a dude doing a girl wrong. Brown, brick, brown. Country is about the same shit. Country is about the same shit. Brown, brick, brown, brick, brown, brick, brown. You know what? I would listen to this country song that was called Country is About the Same Shit. And I would listen to all the lyrics. Country is about the same shit as the song before. You just heard a country song. So why are you listening to this one too? It's the same song. Brown, 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 brown. Honky tonk. Dude, and you walk out. And the live bars. If you're going to have music in your bar, have music in your bar. But don't open the fucking doors and windows. So every time I walk by, it's like I'm in the bar. Because it's so loud. And I just want to walk down the middle of the street with both of my hands out with both of my fingers up, extended to each side of the fucking honky-tonk Broadway, and just giving the fucking bird to each and every bar. Honky-tonk loving, fuck you. He did me wrong, fuck you. More honky-tonk loving, fuck you. That's how it goes. That's how the walk goes. Um, And, uh, oh, here's another thing, uh, Nashville. And I was talking about this on stage. Don't call it Nash Vegas. Okay? Why? 
Now, let me give you the blanket reason why, because it's so sad. Now, why is it so sad? Well, because you can't claim to be one of the baddest cities in the world, one of the greatest cities in the, in the country, so then don't use another city's name to join in to make the name with your city. Because then you're basically saying, hey, we're bitches. We're bitches and the other city is better. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. Hey, Nash Vegas? That's fucking stupid. The first guy who thought of that must have shit himself. Must have been like, fucking dude, this ain't even Nashville. This is fucking Nash Vegas. And then everyone else went, oh, wow. And then one guy had a heart attack and like had to like sit down for a little bit. Had a mini little mini heart attack. And he was like, oh shit, man. I actually can't believe you made such a fucking cool ass discovery. Ting. Oh, shit, man, I, sh I thought I was honky-tonk, but you came up with that Nash Vegas shit. Nope. Guess what I'm going to call it now? Nash Dakota. That's what I'm calling it. You're going to call it Nash Vegas? Every time I hear someone say Nash Vegas, I'm going to fucking say, oh, you mean Nash Dakota? Oh, you mean Nash Aska? You mean Nash Coover? Actually, that place is fucking dope. You have to pick bad places. Um, I don't know. Nash, Jersey. What is it? What's like Las Vegas in Nashville? Can you gamble? No. Can you fuck hookers? No. Can you kill dead bodies and fucking cover it up? No. Is the first 48 often taking place in your city on the outskirts yes but in nashville no i love how nashville is like one fucking blue dot in the middle of a red sea like you can just be in nashville and be like i'm coming out I want the world to know and just be fucking sucking dudes dicks and everybody's cool and that's awesome and be liberal as shit and then if you take like three steps out of the fucking out of Nash Dakota people are like hey what do you think you're doing around here long hair boy or like uh, you're getting a little sweet on that boy aren't you and you're like uh Take three steps back. Um, yeah, so, I, but anyway, we were cool. It was cool to be there. Um, I had a good time there. Uh, I was staying at a hotel. And then the other, uh, my other two openers were staying at the condo across the street. Uh, and, um... I mean, these guys are just fuck. These guys are a laugh, dude. You know what these guys are? A laugh. They're a laugh. I mean, they're like Mike and Mark. First of all, their names are. They're like somebody said this. I don't remember who it was, but they're like the two fucking idiots in Ocean's Eleven. And then they are where they're just like talking about shit that doesn't matter. Who was it? Uh, Affleck, the Affleck kid, and uh, Con. Was that who it was? I don't know, but it was two of them that were always bumbling, and you're, and that's who they are. Um, they're great guys. One of them, Irish Mark, dude, he fucking sweats so much, but when he laughs, it, it's like he's a fucking black comedian in the middle of his set. Like, and I'm just talking about when he laughs at a diner. He sweats so much; it's unbelievable. And 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 the word he uses to describe the the best thing, like the, the like if something's great but better than great, he'll say unreal. That's how I got the unreal pants thing. He'd be like, "Oh, those pants are unreal." And he's, and, but he'll anything. He'll be like, "Oh, is that was it unreal?" Like we'll be at a fucking was this was that crowd good? Or, oh, oh, was it unreal? It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, but the shows were great. Uh, what did we fucking laugh at? We were there early. We were at the fucking show. Or we were at the um, 
airport early. And um, fuck was he saying? I don't remember what we were laughing, but we were laughing so fucking hard that Mark was laughing so hard. <laughs> he was sweating so fucking much, dude. And then we started laughing that he was sweating so much. And then we, we, we couldn't stop laughing. He couldn't stop sweating. And he was so wet by the end of it. It's incriminating that I'm saying this on the podcast. Now y'all know that I have a sweaty opener. Um, but yeah. And uh, so, so, oh God, it's so fucking hot in this room. It, it, it's, it's so hot in this room, dude. And my fucking producer, who was a nice guy, came over while I was gone and fucking did, you know, some shit at the at, for the podcast at my house and then when he left he was like hey man just to let you know that you're, you're keeping a, a, the air on and you shouldn't be keeping the air on and i was like oh yeah so i turned the air off remotely with my phone because mm, james bond <laughs> okay and then um and then when i got home to do this podcast the place was 157 degrees so I was looking at, after I spent fucking 35 minutes looking for boa constrictors, I sat down to do this podcast. Now, since the producer told me to turn off the air, and then I got back, and now the air's not on, and it's 157 degrees, and I had to look for boa constrictors for 35 minutes, one fire them. Now, it's cool, okay, but one fire them. Now, he's a nice guy, one fire them, but, you know, it's all good. Um, anyway... Uh, oh, dude, but I, I fucking forget. I always want to lead with this, and I don't lead with this. Um, so I uh, we got new T-shirts in. Yakutas uh, and new um, Free Conch. And we got all... So go to congratulations, or go to crystalia.com. You can get the fucking stuff um, and all that. My opener was getting sick. So it's always cool as a comedian when your opener gets sick. Because he goes on before you and gets the microphone fucking all hijinked up. And then you got to go on stage. And the whole time you're fucking, even though you're, even though you're fucking, even though you're fucking, and making the crowd laugh. And they're loving you. And they're like, say more, say more. And, you're, and people are falling down and, and people are crying. And people are like, oh my God, oh, I've never seen anything like this. Even though that's what I mean. There are little fucking uh, flu uh, bacteria crawling into your mouth. And that's all you're thinking about. Even though you're, they're still crawling bacteria in your mouth. You know, you're about to get the flu. <laughs> so, but the fucking, Zany's is a cool club, dude. It's it's a cool club. And it that late Friday night show, there are always pieces of shit in it. Always pieces of shit in it, man. There was one chick that was just talking way too loud. And I said, hey, you got to shut the fuck up. And everyone got weird. And then I tried to go into my act, and it was definitely weird for another minute. Oh, yo, I fucking, sorry, guys, but I had to fucking stop the podcast and take my shirt off. I'm sorry. To, and I know you, uh, so here, it may have been, there have been a little bit of a jump cut right there. I don't know, but it was getting so fucking hot in this room because my producer at one fire him. But he, I had to take off my T-shirt. And I know that obviously... Uh, now, you know, I'm doing my t my podcast without my t-shirt on and you can definitely fucking probably feel the sexual energy. Uh, anyway, it's going to be a little bit super sexy, a little bit more super sexy from now on. Um, so sorry about that, but whatever you gotta deal with what you gotta deal with. You know what I mean? Um, uh, dude, when I was at the airport, uh, when I was coming back from the airport, uh, today, I was in, in fucking Nash, Dakota and I fucking was waiting to get in through the TSA, and the oh something that's so cute happened. And the, this fucking I hear this voice go because I'm putting my fucking um, uh, computer in the bin separately. I'm taking it out of my bag, even though it doesn't matter. And I'm putting my toiletries in the uh, little uh, plastic bags and putting the thing, even though it doesn't matter either because nothing's gonna happen. In them, but they still make you do that. And I'm taking my shoes off and I'm putting it in a, in a bin because you got to take your shoes off, even though it doesn't matter. So, um, so I did that. And it, while I'm doing all those things, I absolutely don't matter. So the, uh, while I'm doing those things, I hear from behind this kid say, "Excuse me, I'm 14. Am I allowed to go through there?" And 
dude, I looked over and I and I first of all, it warmed my it warmed my heart because 100% the kid is saying anyone can ever say cuz to say, "Excuse me, sir, I'm 14" is absolutely adorable, okay? But then also say and not saying, should I go through there, but saying, am I allowed to go through there, is that polite and also adorable, okay? That's, it warmed my heart. Then I turned around and looked at the kid, and I saw myself in that kid. And I thought, that's so cute. He's traveling with his family, and I travel with my family, and the kid's wearing shorts, and he's got knobby as shit knees, and a fucking bad haircut, and a great t-shirt. But it made me fucking almost cry, because the kid was warming my heart, because he said that, and he has no idea he did that. He has no idea. He probably doesn't remember what he said. Also, he had an orange suitcase. Don't have an orange suitcase. Anyway, my point is the kid was so dorky, but it was so cute how I heard it first and then expected it to be cute, turned around. Now, 14-year-olds also, let me tell you something. You're not cute if you're a 14-year-old unless it's your, you know, your parents think you're cute. But 14-year-olds look dorky as shit, okay? When someone's 14, their head's too big, their knees are too big, their shoes are too big, and you know, they got pimples all over their faces. But this kid said the thing first. I heard it. Am I allowed to go through there? Talking about the x-ray thing. Oh, of course you're allowed. What the fuck? You're a human. We got to know if you have bombs on you. But it was so cute, man. So then I went back and I grabbed my computer, put it back in the bag. You know, it doesn't matter. I took my fucking shoes, put them back on, even though it doesn't matter. And I also put my toe shoes back in my dock kit, even though it doesn't matter also. Um... Yeah, but it was very cute. It was very, very cute. It was very, very cute. Um, I don't like to get political on this podcast, but I can't believe, I mean, all of Twitter and Instagram is so fucking political right now. It's so fucked up what's going on. It's so fucking crazy what's happening. All the crazy pictures of like the black cop and then the white supremacist behind him. And then I today, the other day I saw, or, or no, today, I'm sorry, not the other day, today, um, I saw pictures of like fucking, I saw a picture w- w- with a black cop. I think it was like two black cops trying to like talk to this fucking two-year-old with a KKK outfit on. The fucking a baby white supremacist, like didn't even know any better. Like wh- what the fuck? The kid could barely say, the kid could barely say the N-word and he's a fucking a racist? No. It was so fucking sad and also like weird that some piece of shit would dress their their son in a KKK outfit. Like some little kid is just like like some kid like like no kid ever said some shit like I don't like Koreans. Like because they're too young. I only like my kind. Like no fucking kid ever said that. I don't like the people who are different colors. I only like pale people. I only like people who don't have, who. (laughs) I only like white people. I mean, it was so fucked up. I mean, I'm making light of it, you know, whatever. But it's, it was so fucked up that these. And, you know. God, imagine seeing that in, in actual life. Like seeing a fucking Ku Klux. A Ku Klux, is it Ku Klux or Klu, Ku Klux, cool. Hey, change it. Oh, Ku Klux Klan, change it. Hey, that's the biggest problem with your organization, okay? (laughs) Imagine being like, dude, imagine, like, just listen to that sentence, actually. Like, take an alien coming down to Earth and being, like, all dressed up as a human and being like, and talking to another alien. Now, the other alien has no idea what any organizations are, right? And the alien says seriously to the other alien, hey, I've really given this a lot of thought. And I really want to join the Ku Klux Klan. (laughs) Dude, it's actually even hard to say in like earn in an earnest way. Hey, mom, dad, I been thinking about it for quite some time and you may not agree with it, but I really want to be a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Hey, are you a fucking wrestler? That's a dumb 
fucking name. Okay? Also, no matter what organization you are, don't wear pointy hats. Okay? Oh, they cover your face? Dorks. Oh, you got robes? Dorks. Oh, you look like Orko grew feet and threw his fucking laundry in the in in with the whites? You're a dork. Okay? You're a fucking dork. Oh, you dress your kid up to be a white supremacist? Hey, kids aren't supreme at anything except for shitting their pants. So put pants on them, not cloaks. Bye. Look, Mom, Dad, I've really been thinking about joining the Ku Klux Klan. Imagine, oh, well, you can't join that because of the fucking stupidest shit name. So anyway, can you join something else, like a federation of something? Oh, man. Anyway, so now they're after me, probably, you know? It's weird that the, that the that they think... Like, we're all like, everyone's like, you shouldn't be racist. They're not, ra you know, don't be racist. But the white supremacists don't think that they're racist. They think that they're the fucking, whoa, sorry, I almost turned into a dragon. I don't know if you heard that, but I had a fucking thing going on in my, in my uh, chest and all that shit. Cool. It's gross. Um, but um, they think that they're the uh, object of where all the racism is coming from. They think that the, what they're doing is right, dude. It's never right to dress up a baby as anything. Except on Halloween, dress him up as a vampire. Um, so, I, dude, I just don't, I don't understand, I don't quite understand it, but, you know, I grew up a little differently than maybe those people. But I am white, like those people, which is weird, and it makes me feel weird, uh being white and it also is hard to not feel guilty about it too uh even though i know i don't do that shit like i i just don't want to be associated with those fucking pieces of shit it's just weird it's a weird fucking time for everybody man it really fucking is and i loved how the fucking it feels like everybody's doing everything wrong though man like the liberals like, took down the statue and, like, were kicking the statue hard. Like, you're just hurting your foot, dude. You're going to break your foot. And also then you make liberals look violent. I get it. There's a lot of pent-up emotion, but I don't know. Is this too serious? I'm not, I mean... Uh. Anyway, anyway, white supremacy is bad. Have you guys tried Lyft? <laughs> Lyft knows that their drivers are what keep them moving, literally and emotionally. So they do everything that they can to make sure their drivers are happy on every tip. It's a simple formula. Happy drivers mean happy passengers. Maybe that's why 9 out of 10 Lyft rides gets a perfect 5-star rating. Um, hello. I don't like to do that a lot, but that deserves a fuck. Uh, uh, Lyft rides get a perfect 5-star rating. Um, hello. Lyft was the first rideshare platform with tipping built right into the app, okay? The other one's copied, so that must mean that Lyft is the best, okay? Ly By the way, tips shouldn't depend on your passenger having a crumpled up bill in their pocket. Express Pay lets you get paid almost instantly instead of waiting for weeks. Join the ridesharing company that believes in treating its people better. Go to lyft.com slash congrats today and you can get a $500 new driver bonus. That's lift.com slash congrats. Lift.com slash congrats. Limited time only. Terms apply. 5-4 is this company, 5-4 club, okay? Under, it understands that your, it's a clothing company. It, it, it understands that your time is extremely valuable and why waste it at the mall or wandering around in the, in, in the stores? Dude, have you been to a mall recently? Oh, it's like that movie Strange Days with Ray Fiennes. Also, that guy's name should be Ralph Fiennes. They've been, lead, they've been the leading men's uh, wear brand for 15 years, and you can trust them with your wardrobe. They got hot styles, man. I wear a few of their shirts all the time. They sent me some stuff. 
each in each month they send you a box of two to three items that are handpicked to match the current season and your style. So if you complete dork, which you are probably, you let these guys help you. They've been helping men with fashion for over fifteen years and ship up to uh, uh, ship to over one hundred thousand men every month. They know what they're doing. If you don't, that's fine. If you don't, because you're a dork, they do because they're fashionable. They'll help you build your wardrobe one month at a time. You get $120 worth of clothes for just 60 bucks a month. Pause or cancel any time. Chris Paul and Mark Wahlberg use 5-4 Club, and 5-4 is featured in GQ, Vice, and in style. Go to 5-4Club.com right now and enter promo code CONGRATS, and they'll give you 50% off your first month's package plus a free pair of sunglasses. What? That's 50% off your first package at 5-4 Club, spelled F-I-V-E-F-O-U-R, club.com. Promo code congrats. 5-4 Club.com, promo code congrats. So, that's what's up. Mark Wahlberg, if Mark Wahlberg says to do something, you got to do it. Mark Wahlberg does that, uh, I think, what is it, DirecTV thing? It, look it up. I think he does the DirecTV thing. Uh, that was me just ripping up my headshot. Um, he, he does a, a thing, and it's so funny because you can feel, he, he's like talking about like, you know, DirecTV has the most, has the most genres of, mu- of, of, of movies, or whatever he says. It's like, DirecTV has the most genres of, mu- of movies. Is it? It's AT and T. Okay, so it's an AT and T thing, whatever. But he's talking about watching movies and, jo- and, and genres of movies, and he's like, "You can watch war movies," and he walks through a war thing, and he, or you can watch action movies, and he walks through a fo- like an action thing, and then he's like, "Oh, you can walk. Oh, you can walk through. Uh, you can walk through. Uh, oh, you can watch a lot of different movies." And the, on the romance one, he says, "Or you can watch romance." And it, my favorite thing is, I know he added this part after the romance thing. He says. You can watch a lot of romance if you're into that. If you're into that kind of thing, and I know he added it. There's no way because he's the man. You know what I mean? He's walking through the romantic thing. People are kissing on the beach, and he says, "Or you can watch romance." And then he says, "If you're into that sort of thing," and I love the fact that the 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 AT and T people or whatever it is, Directv AT and T, they're like, "Oh, we don't want you to say that." And he's like, "Oh, yeah, that's fine, but I'm still gonna do it. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass." And they're like, uh, okay, listen, I'm not romantic. I'm a blockbuster, all right? If you tell me to say, watch a romantic movie, that takes my street cred down a few notches. I'm going to kick your fucking ass if you cut it out. And they're like, since they're all definitely fucking dorks, they're like, okay, well, let's just listen to them. That's what I fucking thought. I don't have to kick your ass. I already got my workout in today. I beat up some people already. Um, unlimited HBO can stop. Come on, I just want all the stuff we say. Want all the stuff. What is it? Oh, I mean, got this. The TMT brings you Directv, Internet, and Wireless all on your terms. It's entertainment your way. I was trying to read it. Didn't really do it too well. Anyway, uh, so Mark Wahlberg, um does that and he punches out some robots in the commercial you know what right what commercial i'm talking about i don't know i don't really watch. i feel i always see it like on the audience channel or some shit i have no idea there's so many outlets and shit i feel like tinder's gonna have a fucking streaming service soon like hey i got a fucking show coming out on tinder oh really yep what's it about oh it's about a down and out cop that's just like trying you know he 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 disrupts the system because he like punches people out and 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 talks and says that and says fuck in court and you're like on Tinder? Yeah, I got a fucking new show streaming on Tinder. It's going to be nominated for an Emmy. It's about it's The Shield. They're remaking they're doing their doing the prequel to The Shield. <laughs> I I mean, you're, you I, that's a joke. I guarantee some shit like that's going to happen. Um, I want to talk about something though that came up the other uh, day to me. I've got a lot of people doing a lot of cool artwork and just fans and shit, you know, babies doing artwork and and showing their support in the podcast. This one, um, this one uh, account, I retweeted it. It's it's a fan account. And this guy, 
let me see if I can find it. This guy did a, it's called C. D'Elia Photoshop. It's not my, I didn't do it, but he made this song called Definition of a Cuda. And I, and I was talking about how when I first said, yeah, that's the definition of a Cuda. I said, that's like a Tupac song, Definition of a Cuda. And I was thinking about another song when he, when he says it. I forget what song he says. Ding. I don't know. But anyway, um, I forget what he's definition of a. I now I don't even remember what the real thing is. But anyway, he took a different song. I think it's Troublesome, I think. I don't know. But. No. Oh, the, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I should know because I love Tupac. But this Cuda thing is kind of. So he. So this guy tweeted if Tupac wrote a track for Chris Leah, this this would be it. And hashtag definition of a CUDA. I retweeted it. A lot of you guys heard it already, but I'm going to play it for you. So here's the deal with this fucking song. I did not write this. And this is not me rapping. This is a guy that did this and made this and put it to a Tupac beat that's already out. And it's really, it made me laugh so hard because in this song, th- these lyrics, this guy's definitely listened to every, if you've listened to every podcast so far, you know that how intricate this song is. So I'm going to play this song for you now. And then uh, you're going to have a laugh. So here it is. Definition of a cooter. The definition of a cooter. The definition of a cooter. Yeah, this one goes out to my family. The definition of a cooter. Yeah, you ought to know who is doing the most. I'm over side to side and coast to coast. I had to fly United, but I'm rolling first class. The scooter with an attitude is giving me sass. He's like, sir, I need to see your receipt. I'm like, who you think you're talking to? I know what I mean. I turn around so I can put it in your shit of a cuda. Beast mode on. Sand castles all day long. Got a finishing of a cuda. Picking up is wrong. Taping with the Hello Kitty on. Got a finishing of a cuda. Beast mode on. Sand castles all day long. Got a finishing of a cuda. Picking up his wrong, taping with the Hello Kitty on. Girl, you never been with the baby before. Come on and sit down and I'll tell you some more. Damn, you so fine, let me put a demon in it. I want to make you mine, so why don't you come and get it? When you're shaking your ass, all I think of is cash. Your girl, you looks good when you back that brakes up. Your man's a cooter, a real lame dude. Now do yourself a favor and go gunk for Gouda. The definition of a cooter. The definition of a cuda. The definition I mean, just so fucking funny and intricate. And dude, got lots of downtime, huh? But this guy's account is really funny because he f- does lots of photoshops. Like he's the one that did the the picture of me and and United fuck the United airplane fucking me. I don't know. And then he did another thing, a country album, Crystalia, Crystalia sucking and fucking. <laughs> He photoshopped my head on some bullshit ass fucking outfit. Like, what is that outfit? I mean, you know, C. Delia Photoshop, you know? Hey, man. <laughs> C. Delia Photoshop. Like, ch- ultimate change it, but you do not change it. Listen to me now. Do not change it because that, that's what it is, man. Live your fucking life, dude. What a baby that guy is, though. Uh, and we haven't announced elders, but it's shit like that, that, that's gonna, that's gonna, you know, get, get you in fucking daddy or mommy's good graces. And I'm either one you want, you know? Uh, so, so we haven't announced an elder yet, but we will be doing that soon. Um, and thinking about, uh, doing it, uh, really, 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 really soon. So I don't know, man, whatever. I want to talk to you about a, f- a company called Nature Box. Now, I like to call it n- Nature Box because I pretend that those ends are ums because that's so yummy. All right. We all want to eat better, but when it comes to snacks, sometimes it feels like the whole world is delicious and a billion calories versus boring and tasteless. Now, you don't want boring and tasteless, but you don't want delicious and billions of calories. It doesn't have to be that way. 
Nature Box has over 100 snacks. That's triple digits amounts of snacks that taste good and are actually better for you. All snacks are made from high quality, simple ingredients, which means no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. So you can feel good about what you're eating. My, I like the salt and vinegar veggie chips and the Asiago and cheddar cheese crisps. Now, obviously, a British guy named that because he said crisps. Uh, but I like those because I like cheese because cheese makes everything better. But Asiago, change it. You're sure to find your... Uh, yeah, don't call your cheese Asiago. It's too, it's too many vowels. Uh, you're sure to find your new snap, snack obsession at Nature Box. They add new snacks every month inspired by, real, inspired by real customer feedback, the latest food trends, and professional chefs. It's real simple. Go to the naturebox.com, choose the snacks you want, and then they'll deliver them right to your door. There's no risk. You don't like it. We'll don't eat it. We'll replace it. They'll replace it for free. Right now, you'll save even more. You're probably like, oh, this is going to cost $14,000, right? No, it doesn't. NatureBox is offering, congrats fans, three free snacks with your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash congrats. That's naturebox.com slash congrats for three free snacks with your first order. Naturebox.com slash congrats. Do you guys know Blue Apron? You did because you first turned on the podcast, and that's what I talked about in the beginning. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. You understand? In the country. In this free country, Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. And take it from me, they did it. Blue Apron has established partnerships in over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. That means everything's better. The seafood seafood is sourced sustainably. The beef, chicken, and pork pork come from responsibly raised animals. And the produce is sourced from farms that practice regenerative farming. Featured upcoming meals. Yeah, watch your mouth water. Watch you watch your mouth water. Featuring upcoming meals. Watch your mouth water when I say this. Basil pesto chicken with summer vegetable penzanella. Oh yum. Sautéed shrimp and green beans with globe tomatoes, spinach, and orso pasta? Oh, come on! Hey, check this one out. Miso butter salmon and lo mein noodles with cucumber and charm tomatoes? You ever had a charm tomato? If you haven't, you don't know how good taste tastes like. Meatball pizza with fresh mozzarella, or as I like to say, mozzarella cheese and charm tomatoes again how many charm tomatoes do they have dude check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash congrats you will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with blue apron so don't wait that's blueapron.com slash congrats blue apron a better way to cook Charm tomatoes, dude. I'll eat those. Hey, globe tomatoes, really? You try like just call them circular tomatoes or spherical tomatoes. Globe tomatoes. Oh yeah, globe tomatoes, really? Where can I find South African your tomato? Oh, I can? It's a tomato then. Square cash. Everyone is squ- switch switching to the squ- to the cash app. Switching or switching? Swishing. Switching. To the Cash App. Do it, dude. Square Cash. It's the best way to pay people back. Friends, family, coworkers, demons, lizards, a wizard. Sending and receiving money is totally free and fast, and most payments can be deposited directly in your bank account in seconds. Square Cash is better than the other guys, and it's not a social network. Who wants to have their payments listed in a feed? Not me. Not a CUDA. It's not Facebook. Download the free Square Cash app for iOS and Android now. All right, look, guys. We're getting lots of work done here, okay? Because my back is sweating like an, like it's so insane. The back of my chair is a water slide. Hey, dude, let me look back and see if there's people waiting in line to get into Six Flags. Oh, dude. Hey, guys. Oh, man. So my producer got up and just left the room because he's hot, too. One fire him. I'll just sit it out. Hey, dude, can you get my LaCroix, my LaCroix please? My LaCroix? It's it's out there. No, it's already out there. It's out there somewhere. Is it on my... You got it? Cool. Because he went to go open the fridge and one fire him because I said it's out there already, but he went to go open the fridge, so one fire him. But anyway, um, 
Thanks, dude. Oh, you brought so I could wipe my back? Cool. Um, it's gross. Anyway. Um, you know, it'd be funny if podcasters were so good at podcasting that they got chicks from it, you know? Um, but yeah, dude, I, by the way, I've been getting so many fucked up, um, Instagram posts of the week. People send me them all the time. And every time I look at them, it's, it's just unbelievable. Uh, let me, let me, let me look up some here. Well, no, I guess there's only going to be one. So here we go. You guys ready? This is the most fucked up Instagram post of the week. Uh-oh. The most fucked up Instagram post of the week. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gunk. Gunk. Oh, God, I want to say these people's names so bad, but I can't. I mean, it's just, I, I don't want to put them on blast. You guys find them anyway. But, um, <clears throat> all right. So here's a girl. She's got a bunch of followers. Um... And now this is what the comment is or the caption is. You want something? Go for it with a savage heart, a courageous mind. Oh, a courageous mindset and a gentle tongue. People will see your perseverance, truth and dedication. You don't need to scream it to them. Dude, so besides the fact that Ah, uh, when she said gentle tongue, uh, my insides boiled. Besides the fact that I got BRM from her saying gentle tongue. Like, I imagine her saying gentle tongue and then being like, but what's another word for gentle? And then, like, Googled the thesaurus for gentle and then was going through a bunch of words and just thought, you know what? It's probably just best and most simple if I just say gentle. Okay. Also, real bad advice. Why do you have to be quiet about it? You don't need to. You don't need to scream it to them. Okay, cool, man. Also, she didn't say. Did she say this? I don't know. I feel like this is a quote by like fucking T. S. Eliot. Okay, and here's the picture. She's dressed like an Indian, and she's not Indian. Or maybe she is, but she's so eh, so dressed up. She's got a machine gun in the picture. And a ch- and a chain that's like a Hercules chain. And feathers in her hair. And then she writes, "I'm ready for another experiment in savagery." This chick kind of just chills out. You know what I mean? She just kind of chills out. She just kind of goes and eats with her friends. Okay? You know? She probably chills out on a couch. I'm looking through her Instagram. She's a model, I guess. She... Here's some her sipping on an iced, an iced latte or something. Here's another selfie of her in a bikini. Experiment in savagery. You know? <laughs> what is that? I, I, If I find, if I ever see her in real life, I'm going to say, hey, 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 hey. What do you mean experiment in savagery? And where's your fucking feathers and machine gun? I wish she dressed like that in real in real life. I'm going to look through these hashtags here right now. Uh, congratulations, Pod. <clears throat> gaming the system. By the way, the guy who created the gaming the system hashtag. Or wait. No, he didn't create the hashtag, but he said he was the first guy who said gaming the system. He says it's too easy to game the system. I, I I forgot I didn't know who he was and then he tweeted me again and he was like hey do you think I should be an elder because I I was the one who first said game the system so funny and also um you know I don't know man okay so uh here are some things here's one dude I don't even know people it's so funny that the things that you guys think I should weigh in on are like sometimes to me 
like I don't know why some things irk me and something, but like some of the things you say, like, "Hey, dude, what do you think about a guy that wears a yellow shirt one day and then a red shirt the next day?" And it's like, "Yeah, but that doesn't irk me," you know. This one doesn't really bug me, although I could see how you could think it might. Uh, but I'm not even bringing this guy's thing up because this guy's the ultimate change it of all time. Well, no, actually, he doesn't. I I still think that other girl was the most. I forget what it was. But it was a few episodes ago. I can't remember what the fuck it was, but I couldn't believe the change it that she had going on. This guy's name is Dookie Spreader. Dookie Spreader, dude. And his profile is... First of all, his face looks so much like a guy that would fucking have a handle called Dookie Spreader. By the way, his name is Dookie Spreader and his fucking thing is Dookie Spreader. Hey, man. You got problems. You got pros, okay? And this guy, Dookie Spreader, okay? And what are the three icons under the thing, dude? You see those three icons? What even are those? Oh, the frog. Okay, cool. All right, this is what it says on his thing. And lost it. (laughs) Want to fire him? Dude, the producer... Uh, man, just look, you know, and he took it out and lost it. So it's all good. Tweeted 75 times since he tweeted that. So uh, anyway, he was asking what my thoughts on uh, ankle socks were, which aren't a big deal to me. I mean, here's the deal. Uh, he, actually, I do have a thought about ankle socks. I don't think that they're that big of a deal. All right. If you're going to wear ankle socks, you can wear ankle socks. I think you pretty much should only wear them if you got low tops on, because why are you wearing ankle socks if you got fucking high tops on? But... I don't feel that strongly about that. But here's what I do feel strongly about. If you go to someone's house and you take off your shoes and you have ankle socks on, you take those goddamn ankle socks off too. You never walk around in just ankle socks, even if you're alone, because that's some fucking serious dumb... You you look... You're a bitch, basically. You're a fucking mark-ass bitch alone in your house. You can't be a mark ass bitch alone in your house. If you if you're at home, you need to work on being the least mark ass bitch possible. Because if you're a mark ass bitch at home, you're gonna be a mark ass bitch out in the wild. Do you understand me? All right. So that's the rule, dude. Take the fucking for sure. Take the fucking ankle socks uh, off if you take your fucking shoes off. What else we got? Um. My guess is what? This guy, Nick Sanderson, at Nick Swag, at N Swaggerson. Oh, dude. And change it. Oh, wait, by the way, the Dookie Spreader guy couldn't look more like a guy whose face that would be like, think it's cool to call, did you say Dookie Spreader. And also, he, he he's buried in sand, and under his face, somebody made sandcastle tits. Hey, guy, be more you. Oh, you can't? Cool. Here's so Nick Swaggerson. Do you enjoy animated sitcoms at all, like South Park, for example? My guess is no, LOL. Congratulations. I love South Park. Dude, South Park is... If you don't like South Park... If you think South Park is not funny, I, I can't understand what uh, what happened in your life to make you think that. I used to have a fucking buddy that didn't like South Park. Um, I'm actually not his friend anymore because he's a piece of shit, but not because of the South Park thing. But just goes to show you, you don't like South Park, you piece of shit. Um... South Park is the fucking... And how do they keep making stuff that's relevant and so funny? So fucking funny. Here's another one. Arthur Stoffel. I mean... What kind of a name is Arthur? Put the H in it. Um, You know? At Arthur Stoffel. Oh, hey, man. You forgot the H in your handle and also your name thing. So, Oh, put the H in it, dude. Your name's Arthur... Oh, dude, he meant to say Arthur. Okay, so Arthur Stoffel. It sounds so German to me. Arthur Stoffel. Hello, I'm Arthur Stoffel. Is everything all good? Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be good? Everything is absolutely fine. (laughs) Where's the H? I poisoned it. (laughs) Where's the H in your name? I don't know. I haven't seen it in quite some time. I promise you that. Maybe it took a sabbatical. 
Maybe it went somewhere for vacation. Maybe I poisoned it. Where's the H? I haven't seen it in quite some time now. Um, and Stoffel makes me think of stove stovetop. P- p- what was that fucking thing? Stovetop cooking or whatever? Oh, that shit made me so hungry when I was a kid. Made me shungry. Any thoughts on people who use the phrase story of my life on a regular basis? Great question. Here's the deal, man. If you are some kind of fucking person that says story of my life in jest, your ego is out of control. You don't have a story about your life, okay? Your life is your life. If you say story of my life and you're not Huck Finn, hey, um... If you don't say, if you say story of my life and you're not fucking the main character in Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, then you know what? Don't say. But also, if you say, yo, that's the fucking story of my life, like exasperated and you're like, I'm at a loss, then I think it's okay fucking story of my life man i can't keep a fucking relationship together story of my fucking life that's okay but if you're like ah, oh, the waiter always fucks up my thing story of my life huh hey you're not that important zora neil hurston didn't write your life uh here's another one beck to the future is her name and at becky underscore elaine is the actual handle a rare Name change it and not a handle change it. Back to the future? Nah. How many of the stories comedians tell during a set are actually true? Hmm. Well, since I'm not goddamn Google, um, I can only guess. But I think most of the shit. It's a good question, actually. Uh, I mean, all of my shit is true, except you exaggerate it a little bit, you know, to make it funny. Like, if you're telling a story about a fucking giraffe and you're like, and then the giraffe said this, you know, the giraffe didn't say the shit. You kind of can put it together if it's true or not. Rarely do people make shit up unless it's like somebody that is obviously doing one liners that is like, yeah, so I just heard my dad got AIDS and you know, it didn't happen or something, you know, and then he makes a joke about AIDS and it's a joke and it's fucking is a misdirection or something. But thanks back to the future. Change it. Dude, I, just, I, I fucking am looking through Twitter. Hey, Lil Pump has a song called Molly, so go out and fucking grab that. Hey, rappers, rap about Molly more. Dude, hey, rappers, you should rap about Molly more because nobody's rapping about Molly. So come out with a song called Molly. Oh, this guy did. Cool. Eh, so bad for kids. <laughs> oh, man. Um... This guy, Zach Werner, at Z underscore Werns. Since you're from Jersey, what are your thoughts on the pork roll versus Taylor Ham issue? Hey, man, Italian. Hey, dude, can you have a fucking car? This guy, hey, yo, Chris D'Elia, since he's from Jersey, what are your thoughts on, you know, the whole pork roll versus Taylor Ham issue? Hey, suh, fat cop, you know, to say that. On the outside of a fucking... Hey, you have this fucking pork roll. Or you'd rather have a Taylor ham. Hey, you know what? Give me a Taylor ham. Be, what the fuck are you talking about? This guy, place got pork rolls. Nah. I don't fuck... I don't get those pork rolls. I get those fucking Taylor hams. I used to love Taylor ham when I was a kid, dude. When I was a kid, I used to fucking go get Taylor ham. That shit was so salty and good. And I'll tell you what, man. I'm real set on my ways. Once I hit that Taylor ham shit, I never got a fucking pork roll. I knew what I liked. Done. Case closed. My hands are tied now. That's it. Case fucking closed. You put something in my mouth and then it tastes as delicious Taylor ham. I'll never fucking look at a pork roll in my in the eyes. And I'm serious about that too. And I'll go to fucking war for that Taylor ham. And I'll fucking say shit like, nah. And I don't even say shit like, nah, pork rolls fucking suck dick. It's because Taylor ham got to my mouth first. Pork rolls needs a better fucking PR department. And I'll tell you what, I don't know about now, but back in the 80s, pork roll needed a better fucking PR department because Taylor Ham was all in my fucking head. I put that shit right inside my pink mouth. It's just sexual somehow. What the fuck? I don't really know what pork roll is. Oh, it's basically... God. Well, it looks like Taylor Ham. 
Taylor Ham is Taylor Ham with the fucking side split. And pork roll looks exactly like Taylor fucking Ham. I don't know. Maybe it looked different. I don't know. Maybe I'm not that much from Jersey. I'm moving on. I was 12, though, bro. But please, next time, ask a more Italian fucking Jersey question. Hey, would you? Hey, what do you think of the differences between fucking Puerto Ricans and blacks? <laughs> it's offensive. Um, but it's Italian. Hey, 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 who would you rather not have in your neighborhood? Puerto Ricans or blacks? Fucking. Oh, it's the same thing? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, he's saying. Oh, he's saying, what do you call it? Pork roll or Taylor ham. I call it Taylor ham. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I'm fucking LA living, baby. I got my fucking shorts on right now and my shirt off. Well, it is August, so everywhere your shirt should be off. But, man, I'm just chilling in L.A., baby. Hey, L.A., why don't you get this syphilis tsunami billboard out of the fucking way? The STD check org or whatever, the check.org? Syphilis tsunami? Gross. When I'm driving down the street, I don't want to crash. When I see a fucking syphilis tsunami, it's got a billboard in L.A. It says syphilis tsunami. It's about, they want you to get checked for STDs so you don't... um spread syphilis I don't even know if fucking people still got syphilis I mean I did but I thought that that was like a Game of Thrones disease um I don't like uh quirky uh STD billboards like feel the burn or uh uh <laughs> there's one get tested and chill like for Netflix like come on dude I, I'm sure there's a got STD one, like the got milk. There's got to be one. Also, there's one that says go. There's one that says free. Go back. This says free STD check. Oh, I'll give my producer a little bit of attitude right there. Free STD check dot org, and it's got one that says chlamydia, and then gonorrhea, and there are people's faces, and they're kissing Tinder and Grinder, which is really probably bad. They could sue them. Hey Tinder, get on that, dude. If you're gonna start, a, they're gonna start a streaming service soon, dude. You don't want to be. Uh, linked with chlamydia. Here's another one. We catch them all like the Pokemon shit. Hey, it's disrespectful for people who are dying from STDs. It's disrespectful. Dude, I get sent crazy. I just thought this. I get sent crazy DMs, obviously, and crazy messages on all the fucking platforms. And for some reason, this one made me laugh so much. And I don't know if I can describe why, but I'm just going to read it to you. I mean, I get crazy shit, obviously, but this, and it's a subtle thing. It's not really like a crazy in your face thing. I mean, the foreign ones are the best, obviously, but <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you guys name, obviously. Chris, I think you are the top comic that I have seen on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> First <laughs> First of all, the way the guy's trying to like butter me up is hilarious. Also, the top comic that he saw on top, like on Sunset Boulevard, I'm the top one, which is just so funny because to me, this guy's trying to butter me up. Like, not like also, why say, even say top comic? Just say, I th what do you mean? What do you mean you think? If you. If, he writes this whole paragraph and doesn't even know that this is me? No. He obviously knows. So he's being so cute and so coy about calling me a top comic and buttering me up. So already I'm laughing. I am a finance guy and do seminars and would love to start using humor in my presentations. Okay? We're killing me. All right? One of the things I really like about your style is that you really seem to be enjoying what you're doing on stage. You build great characters, and then he mentions some of them, and your emotion on stage is contagious. When you laugh, I laugh. Okay, well, that's comedy. Any suggestions for me? This is the where it gets good. I realize actually reading into it, it seems like fucking just compliments to me, and I'm like, uh, now it seems like I'm fucking just jerking off on this podcast. But this is the good part. Any Any suggestions for me on how to do a little of what you do? Where do I begin? I am taking an acting class at UCLA. <laughs> I am taking an acting class at UCLA, and the teacher says that I am like Jason Bateman. <laughs> a, 
a good straight man. I, I wish I could show you this guy's picture. Looks nothing. Looks nothing like Jason Bateman. Looks like the guy you'd think this guy would look like. I think. Okay. All right. I am taking an acting class at UCLA, and the teacher says I am like Jason B- Bateman, a good straight man. I think he might be saying politely that I don't have much, <laughs> that I don't have much emotional range, and I am too much in my head. Like, <laughs> so jumping to conclusions. Since security is coming out so hard, you know, his mom used to beat him and say he had no emotional range and it's too much in his head and now it's coming out. I think he might be saying politely that I don't have. Well, like, why? Jason Bateman's a great actor. And what do you, why do you think, hey, you're like Jason Bateman? Why does that make you think, oh, you mean I'm too much in my head? Any suggestions on how to begin and grow my comedic range would be appreciated? It's a question mark. Best wishes and then his name. Dude, this is so something that what I would think a finance guy would think about comedy. Like I know obviously all of you finance guys out there don't think about comedy that way. But this is so eh, so basic to be like, oh, hey, humor is something I'd like to use. Like it's a fucking cheese grater and then being like, how do I acquire that? You're not a robot. You can't upgrade your system. And then he's like, he's an acting class in UCLA because he's giving because he gives seminars. Oh, that's really cute, man. That's really cute. Guess if this guy's white or not. Of course he is. Guess if he's beige. Yup. Guess if his hair's beige. Yup. Oh, I fucking love it. Dude, I was in an Uber the other day, and this fucking killed me too. On the back of the Uber's, on the back of the driver's seat, in my face, so I could read it, it said, oh God, I'm going to tweet it. Don't for, it, it. It was like a laminate thing that he made. Don't forget to rate five stars, it says. And then it had all these fucking things on this laminate. Look how busy it is, dude. Look, it's so busy. I just showed up my bruise producer started laughing it says thank you for your business and then it says also i mean this thing is literally six inches tall and maybe six inches wide or it's probably four inches tall and six inches wide don't forget to rate five stars and then it has five stars make sure you have all items before leaving thank you for your business then it says tips are not required but are greatly appreciated. Then it has a hand with money in it. Then on, next to that, it says charger available. And and under that, it has an icon of a battery charging. And then it says next to that, seat belts, please. And then under that, it has the seat belt sign. And then this is my favorite part. If you need anything, just let me know. Could have wrapped that whole thing up with just a laminate that says, if you need anything, just let me know. I mean, oh, I got to tweet this, dude. I mean, so much business on this fucking laminate. And then, of course, he had one on the other side. Ah, it was I it was like when I I, I, I walked in and I went, ah, I sat down and looked at it and I went ah, out loud because I couldn't help myself. I wish other people were in my Uber with me. I would have fucking spent the whole time on the ride pointing to it with my mouth open, looking looking at the guy I was with. Ah, and I would have kept going. As we're driving to the hotel. Uh, and then I would have said other th- tips are not required, uh, but they're greatly appreciated. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Kinko's to make it, dude. If you need anything, let me know. Oh, like I would. Don't forget to rate five stars. Uh, it is it, really cute. The guy was really cute, too, man. God, it made me laugh. I watched the fucking Amanda Knox. The, I watched the fucking Amanda Knox thing on um, on uh, Netflix. I'm halfway through it. I was watching it on the flight because I downloaded it on Netflix so I could watch it on. So I didn't have to fucking. You can get high streaming services, by the way. Uh, on um, you can get high streaming high stream. You can now pay extra on a plane on Delta to stream stuff. Did you know that? Yeah, you can fucking do that. It costs 
one million dollars, but you can do it. So I just download the shit. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. You knew that. That's one of those things. You know that they could have made it happen fucking years ago, but they didn't, and now they're just charging them for it. And that makes me want to get everybody who works at all the airlines companies in a fucking headlock and give them serious nuggies, dude. That's Pauly Shore giving them nuggies. Um. And I was watching the Amanda Knox documentary finally on Netflix. I wanted to watch it. The fucking reporter who covered the case. Hey, is that guy real? That guy is such a piece. I mean, such a piece, dude. He is such a piece. He is such a piece, dude. He's like, well, I think he's, I think he's British, but he's like, you know, um, you know, I, I would. He he created a narrative and then got fucking Amanda Knox in so much trouble because he was such a piece. And he was like, you know, the people who were telling me not to do the story are the same people who are checking on, or checking a story every morning when I wake up. Hey, that doesn't make them as bad as you. That's like saying I murdered a guy, but you're just as bad because you wanted to hear about it. G gunk. Hey, British guy, step back a few. Step back a little bit. Oh, where? Where, where, where do you want me to step? Just step back a little bit further. A few steps back. Oh, I'll just take a few steps on this. Yeah, just take a few steps back. You created that story, right? You created the narrative that fucking Amanda Knox killed the person. I just step back a little bit. Yeah, that was me. I, you know, I went through really a lot of depths to do it. Just step back a little bit further, a little bit further. Okay. Oh, that's great. I, I think I'm here. Okay, cool. G gunk. G gunk. I mean, come on. You bad purse. You piece. It's free conch. That should be illegal. You could I mean, come on, dude. I just hit you with the fucking combo. I hit you with the congratulations combo. Dude, I hit you with the fucking congratulations combo. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, I was coming. Step back. Good gunk. You fucking free conch should be illegal. You could Don't do. What if somebody just turned on the podcast in that moment? You'd literally think it was ramblings of fucking Charles Manson. Dude, how about when Charles Manson... <laughs> oh, wait, was it Charles Manson, the crazy one? When they're like... When they're like, what's your favorite color? And he's like... Red. Oh, man. It's probably relaxing to be that fucking crazy. Oh, this is the longest podcast we've ever done. Oh, man, it was so funny. I saw some guy getting so mad, so mad because I was doing ads. And he was like, yeah, the podcast used to be good, but he's doing ads now and he's doing and he's doing ads and it fucking sucks because, you know, make the podcast longer. If you're going to do the ads, fuck Chris. And all of the babies fucking went on and went in on him about like, hey, you want to work for free? You coulda. So funny. And that is the absolute fucking thing that this cult bans this cult together we are we are sending out elders soon we are we are we are we need these all right now if you're an elder you have rank over a baby but you're still a baby i'm a baby i'm mommy but i'm the baby you understand what i'm saying it's like the end of the movie when you're like oh he was both I'm telling you that up front. No hidden fees. There's no, 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 no surprises. Want you to know. Um. But yeah, that's that. Um. So. Oh, that's it. Uh, you guys got to remember blue. Apron, check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash congrats. And Square Cash, you switched yet? Because it's been like 40 minutes since I told you to. Download the free Square Cash app for iOS or Android now. Um, upcoming shows. I got some upcoming shows uh, coming up. And the merchandise announcements uh, get made on Twitter. So be sure to follow there. You can follow... Uh, my, you could follow me or also uh, congrats, congratulations pod or uh, it's congrats pod, congratulations pod, 
congratulations pod or you can follow the store uh Congrats pod is the Twitter and my, my computer my, my producer messed that up so one fire him. So but yeah, but it's congrats pod is the Twitter and the hashtag is congratulations pod and he's still talking to no one fire him. But um uh my upcoming shows, we got some in Hollywood, California, those are sold out. Salt Lake City coming up, those are almost sold out. Uh at Wise Guys Comedy Club. Uh so get on that. A few are sold out already. Phoenix, Arizona, that is my, uh, a great club, a great club. I'm there one night, and then I'm in Tempe for the weekend. Tempe is m- 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 top two, three places, favorite places to go to and do stand up. I love it there. Uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey, Spokane, Washington. Why am I going? Charlotte, North Carolina. Why? Adelaide. Um, what is that? Australia. Australia. SA. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Adelaide, Australia. Um, Perth, I'm going to Melbourne, I'm going to Sydney, Australia, Brisbane, Australia, Irvine, California, and Sa- and San Jose, California, and I'm also adding a city in Ohio soon. Um, you guys, uh, those um, dates are all available on my website except for the Ohio one so far, but go check out and get the get the podcast there, or, or get the podcast there, get tickets there, and um, rate and review this podcast, please. Thank you very much. It helps. And if you're a true baby like you're saying you are, uh, you know, it helps if you rate and review. Uh, but Man on Fire on Netflix, watch that. If you haven't watched it, uh, watch it. And if you've watched it and you like it, tell your friends. Tweet it and um, and uh, tell your friends and, and, and text your friends to watch it. And uh, some of you guys have viewing parties. That's so cool. I really appreciate all that stuff. Watch it next time you're on the plane. Watch it. Um, I saw oh, I saw a guy today on his iPad sur- s- flipping through Netflix. He didn't know I was there or even I don't even know who it was. But he was flipping through stuff. And mine came and he fucking flipped right on by it. Now, not a cuda. Or not a cuda. I'm not going to say he's not cu- he's a cuda for that. But definitely not a baby. So, uh, but yeah, I was like watching it go. And I was like, I wonder if he's going to click on that. And he flipped it. Through, and I was like, no, guess I'm a piece of shit. Um, and then he started watching Gypsy with Naomi Watts. Eh, not my demo. Uh, so anyway, um, you guys are the best. Thanks so much for, uh, for, for fucking being with me on this fucking great, great, great journey. And it's just been such a great journey. Um, my producer was just waving air over to his face because it's so hot, but he was doing it like a bitch. Okay, guys, take care.